In the last video, I got the gantry built and mounted on the CNC machine. And in this one, I'm going to continue working on the Z axis, starting with what I'm calling the spindle plate. This is a quarter inch thick aluminum, and I'm cutting it on the old CNC. And once those holes are made, I can use a couple of them to drive screws in so that I can take the clamps away and cut the profile. And based on the comments I've gotten on the previous videos, I should point out that this CNC that you're watching here is one I made myself as well. And the reason why I'm saying that is to point out that this one works exactly the same as the new one will, in that I'll be taking very light cuts and lots of passes to cut through the metal. In other words, I'll be trading speed for economy. And that was a consideration from the very start on both of these builds in deciding how stiff I need these to be, and in turn, how much I wanted to spend on them. A CNC that cuts more aggressively would have to be a lot stiffer, a lot more rigid, and ultimately costs more. And that's something that happens in every project when you're building things that work in the real world. The plate that I just cut needs some holes tapped. And once again, I'm doing that on my drill press with the counterbalance on the handle. And I'm only using this to start the threads so that they're nice and straight and square to the stock. And then I'll finish them with the tap mounted in the hand drill. And once again, I'm using bacon grease as the tapping fluid. I could have done all the tapping on the drill press, but doing it this way is a lot faster. And the holes that I'm tapping are two different sizes. I've got 832. And that's the size bolt I'm using to mount the linear bearing rails. And I'm going to get one temporarily fastened so that I can mark the length accurately and then cut them off. And I didn't show this, but I confirmed that these rails are straight and when I put them on, I check to make sure that they are parallel to each other. To get the spindle plate mounted on the x-axis, I need to take off one of the plates that I made last time, and that's the mounting plate for the bearing blocks for the z-axis. And I can get it put back on the x-axis with the bearings in place. And the part that I'm putting on now is the lead screw nut for the Z-axis. Once again, another 3D printed part that has threads printed in it that match the lead screw. And before I put the other side on, I got to get some grease in here because it'll be very difficult to get to this afterwards. Using regular threaded rod for the lead screws and these 3D printed nuts is another example of a real world compromise where I looked at how much I'll be using this machine and weighed it against the cost to build it. Now I can get the spindle plate put on being very careful when I do that to make sure that I don't knock out any of the ball bearings that are inside these blocks. Like the old machine, the lead screw for this axis is just regular 3 8 inch threaded rod and I'm turning down the end so it's the correct diameter to fit in the bearing that I have. And that bearing is held in another 3D printed block that mounts on the bottom of the spindle plate. Once again, with a couple of 832 screws. Then I can thread in the rod, and to make that go quicker, I'm using the drill. And I stop most of the way down, and I'm going to thread it in by hand so that I can guide it into the bearing. And the coupler that I have for this axis is once again 3D printed. And I'm going to get that pushed onto the shaft on the motor. And like the couplers that I made for the Y-axis, this one is also threaded so that the lead screw screws right in. Now before I go any further, I need to replace these screws on the top for two longer ones. And that's so that they'll come through the other side and I'll be able to fasten an angle plate that I made. Once again, cut on the CNC, but I didn't film it. And thread on nuts on the other side. Once again, I need to tap out holes on the top so that I can screw on the motor mounting plate, another part that I cut on the old CNC that I didn't film. Because you've seen enough of that CNC in action already. And belt and suspenders here with another screw that will lock it in place.
Then I can get the coupler threaded onto the leaf screw and then lift the whole thing up so that that projection on the front of the motor fits into the hole in the motor mounting plate. And of course I can drive in screws to get that fastened as well. The quarter inch threaded rods that I'm putting in here are for the spindle clamps. I get those threaded in and get the clamps put on and the spindle put on as well. With that done, I built a very crude stand for the CNC so I could move it off the workbench and get it into the place where I'll be using it. And I wanted to get this done quickly so I didn't film it. Besides, it's not an example of my best work, but it gets the job done and it has one interesting feature and that's a tray that slides out on the side for the laptop that will control the machine. And with the CNC in a more permanent location, I could hook it up and try it for the first time at least to drive the y-axis. It's always nice to see that the machine actually works after you've put so much time into building it. But of course I'm not done yet. Next step is to take the gantry apart again because I need to drill out those holes that I marked at the end of the last video. The first one is for the bearing for the x-axis and the other one is the larger hole for the motor. And to mount the motor I'm marking the holes with the correct size brad point bit and then I can take the motor off again and drill out the holes to the right size for the screws that I'm going to be using. And while the gantry is apart, I'm going to take the time to paint the wooden parts. I had a few comments from people concerned about wood around coolant, and that's a valid point, of course, but in case you haven't been outdoors and looked at anything, paint is a pretty good protection against water. And while the paint was drying, I figured I would get some real grease into these linear bearings and also in the lead screw nut for the x-axis. And when the paint was dry, I could get the masking tape taken off again and get the x-axis put back on. Now the gantry is made from plywood and solid wood, and that's pretty stiff and strong, but I can increase the stiffness quite a bit by adding some metal. So I've got another piece of quarter inch thick aluminum that I'm going to cut to the correct width to make two plates that will mount on the top and bottom of the gantry. And I'm making the cuts on the table saw with a metal cutting blade, being very careful. And after the cut to width, I can cut them to length using my mini table saw sled. And one of these needs to be notched on the end to fit around the gantry sides. And I'm using my mini table saw sled again to make those cuts. And to fasten them onto the gantry, I'm just using inch and a half wood screws. I'm going to mark out and drill the holes, but these are slightly undersized. This is actually the size that needs to be drilled into the gantry for the screws so that I can use the plate itself as the template for drilling those holes. And with that done, I can bring it back to the drill press and drill out the holes to the right size. And these also need to be countersunk. And once again, I'm using baking grease to aid in the cutting. And then when I got all the screws driven in, I brought it back over to the machine and got it put back on. And this thing is heavy. Oh, I'm using my woodworking lathe as a metal lathe to once again turn down the end of the lead screw. This one is for the x-axis. And I'm doing it on a lathe because this one's a lot longer and it would be a lot harder to do it with it mounted in the cordless drill. And with that done, I can get it stuck in and you can see I've got the motor put on the end, but that's just to measure the length that this needs to be. I cut it long and now I'll know exactly how much I need to take off to make it the right length. And the coupler for this one is exactly the same as the one on the Z-axis. And the head on the screws that I have for the motor are a little bit too big. I'm gonna turn those down with them mounted in the drill. In the next video, I've got a lot more details to clean up, but we are close to the end of this build and seeing it making its first part.